you see the woman in the snow globe? No? All right, here, let me zoom in a little bit for you. A little bit more. Oh, there's a woman. No, that's not the woman I'm talking about. I'm talking about the woman in the snow globe. Let's keep going. Uh, there's the snow globe. Let's zoom in a little bit more. That was the one I was talking about. What you just saw is the power of the new Midjourney 5.2. Now, Midjourney themselves didn't seem to make a real big deal about this. They put an announcement in their Discord, but this new update, quite honestly, has been massive. It's unlocked all sorts of new potential inside of Midjourney, and I'm gonna break down some of the cool things that you can do with this new version of Midjourney in this video, including things like an infinite zoom effect, creating consistent characters, and actually putting two different characters into a single image, which has been really hard in the past with mid journey so let's get into it but first i want to show off some of the really cool art that i've come across on twitter from other people using the newest version of mid journey just so you can see the kind of quality that people are getting out of this right now here's some images from orkton here they started with this zoomed in eye you can see the prompt here and the alt tag you can go ahead and pause and read it if you want or i'll just link to their tweet in the description and you can check it out yourself but it starts with this zoom in of an eyeball and then they zoom out 2x and now you get a little more of the face and i mean look at the detail and the water drops, everything is looking amazing. Zoom out a little more, you get a little more of the face. Zoom out even more, zooms out a little bit more and a little bit more. Oh my gosh, there's somebody else in the picture. Zooms out a little bit more. I love this zoom out feature and how much new creativity it's bringing in what I'm seeing on Twitter from people using Midjourney. Here's another one from Astral Knot that just shows off how realistic the newest version of Midjourney is with these faces. I mean, this is getting to the point now where if somebody just sent you that picture, you probably wouldn't be able to tell that it's an AI image and not an actual photograph. And then they zoom out, zoom out some more, and then they widen the image here. And these are probably some of my favorite images that I've come across so far that were just generated with 5.2. This is from Mare King AI, and they're not specifically using the zoom out feature for these. I just love the quality of the art. I mean, this one, maybe there's some extra fingers going on here if you look close enough, but I just love the detail in these images. And then this battleship explosion, this warplane, it looks so good. Here's another of like a muscle car going through a burned out city or something. But that's just the beginning of the creativity that we're seeing from people creating stuff on Mid Journey 5.2. And don't worry, in a minute, I'm gonna make tutorials on how you can do all of the stuff that I'm showing off here. This one from Professor Crispy I thought was really awesome because they turned it into a sort of video storyline. Zooming out on Mid Journey 5.2 can unveil unexpected and incredible plot elements. And then if you take a peek at the animation here, you can see it starts with Hulk in a lab and then it zooms out a little bit more, zooms out a little bit more of Hulk still in the lab, zooms out some more. All of a sudden, another Hulk comes in. This must be the real Hulk. And then he gets angry at the camera and then he screams and bashes is the cameraman. So just using Mid Journey version 5.2, they created this whole story around Hulk and his twin brother, I guess. The zoom out feature has also unleashed a ton of these types of videos, including this one from Nick St. Pierre, where it's got this almost infinite zoom effect. It starts with this woman in a garden and then it slowly zooms out and it's using that frame interpolation technique. So you can kind of see the edges sort of blur in on it. And it's just this amazing technique. And then he zooms back in on the girl in the garden again. Here's one that's in reverse where she took all the zoom out images, but reversed it and zoomed in on it. It looks like maybe we're in some sort of spacecraft and we're zooming in on the bedroom of the spacecraft or something like that. It's just this really, really cool effect that you can get as a result of this new mid journey feature. Here's one from Neo 111. This one's actually quite a long video where it just continually zooms out and zooms out and zooms out and more gets added to the picture and it changes and the style changes and what you think you're looking at all of a sudden changes to something completely different. And I just love of this effect and in just a minute I'm going to show you how to do it. Here's a crazy video from the Door Brothers. Check this one out. They took a whole bunch of different image generations that were zoomed in and zoomed out and overlaid them over each other and animated them and got this just crazy effect throughout this entire video. I mean this one must have taken absolutely forever to create so I really applaud them in the in the way they made this one and the creative effect that came from it. And then here's one that I shared recently that shows the effect of creating a sort of consistent character. Yes, the character's always kind of looking in one direction, but you could start with a zoom in on somebody's eyes and then zoom out and put them in different scenarios. And that's exactly what I did with this one. I put them in an underwater scene. I put them in a military outfit. I put them in prison. I put them in front of a fancy car. I put this person in space and then I put them in a psychedelic world and then I put them on the beach and then I put him in a baseball game. And I'm gonna show you how to do this effect in just a second as well. So let's go ahead and jump over to Midjourney 
journey and I'll show off how to do a few of these cool effects. Now, the first effect I wanna show you is how to get two different characters into the same scene in Mid Journey. This is something that's been really, really hard to do. If you try to just type a prompt that says, Elon Musk standing in a boxing ring next to Mark Zuckerberg, you're probably gonna get either two Elon Musks or just Elon Musk or just Mark Zuckerberg or maybe even some sort of like hybrid of the two people, but you're never gonna get both of them side by side like you see in this image. Here's how you do that. You start with just one person. So let's do imagine Snoop Dogg standing on a beach on a bright sunny day. All right, so we have a few images here of Snoop Dogg standing on a beach. Let's go ahead and take this bottom left one here and upscale that one. When we upscale, we'll see that we get new options for very strong, very subtle, zoom out 2X, zoom out 1.5X and custom zoom. Custom zoom is really where you're gonna spend most of the time because custom zoom is where you can get some really, really cool effects. So let's say I want Snoop Dogg to be standing next to Mar Martha Stewart. Let's go ahead and do custom zoom and it'll bring up this box here where we can tweak some of the settings. So right now we have Snoop Dogg standing on a beach on a bright sunny day, aspect ratio one, one, zoom two. Let's add Martha Stewart with Snoop Dogg standing on a beach on a bright sunny day. Let's go ahead and increase the aspect ratio to 16.9 just to make it a wider image. And let's click submit. We'll leave the zoom at two. And here's what we got. And I find this one up at the top left, absolutely hilarious because they tried to make a sort of hybrid of Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart here. Same with this one down here, but it's almost the sort of reverse where it looks more like Snoop Dogg's face with the blonde hair. But this top right image, you've got Martha Stewart with Snoop Dogg and then a, a big dog in the background. Probably wasn't the best example in the world, but but this is how I got two characters to work in the same scene together. In fact, if I scroll up, you can see what I started with up here. I started with an image of Elon Musk. I zoomed out. I said, Mark Zuckerberg standing next to Elon Musk. It gave me a handful of new images. This one on the top right looked the most like Mark Zuckerberg to me. I think they're being very generous on the muscles. So I upscaled that one, zoomed out one more time, and then ended up with this image of Elon and Zuck next to each other by a boxing ring. All right, next I'm gonna show you how to get that sort of consistent character effect like I showed in that animation earlier. So in that one, I did a man with a beard. Here's how I would do it. I would start with a close up of a blonde woman's face. And then I like to put soft focus because then it doesn't try to put anything in the background naturally on it. And then I'm gonna add aspect ratio 16, nine just to get it that wider image to start. All right, we've got some images here. I wanna make sure I pick an image that has the eye and the mouth in it just to make sure that it gets the same look with every single prompt. So I'll go ahead and use this third image here. It will upscale number three. For the first prompt, let's go ahead and put her on the beach. So I'm gonna click custom zoom. I'm gonna get rid of her face and soft focus and we'll put a blonde woman sitting on the beach. And then I'm gonna leave the zoom at two so it zooms out a little more. Here's the result of that, but I wanna zoom out just one more time. I think I like the one on the top right. I'm just hoping that it processes the rest of her hands properly. So let's go ahead and upscale number two here. And then I'm gonna zoom out 2X one more time. I don't need to do a custom zoom. I just wanna use the same prompt and zoom out one more time. And here's the resulting images. I think I'll upscale number one. And here's the final result of that one. All right, so now I wanna make an image of her in the woods. So I'll come back up to this one all the way up here that's super zoomed in on her face. I'm gonna click custom zoom again. And this time I'm gonna do a blonde woman sitting in a forest at night. And it's gonna use this initial image as the base image image and I'm going to repeat this process again but now with this new prompt. Now we've got three images to choose from. I think this bottom right one is probably the closest to what we want so I'm going to go ahead and upscale number four and then once again I'm going to zoom out 2x on that one. We've got a few options here. I think the top right looks the coolest so I'll go ahead and upscale number two and this is the result. Now you can see I've got two images here that are basically the same woman in two different environments. I'm going to do this a few more times and get a few variations. All right so I've generated a few more. I've got a blonde woman in in a beautiful red ball gown at a fancy gala event. I've got a blonde woman wearing a military uniform ready to go into battle, a blonde woman wearing a baseball cap at a baseball game, a blonde woman in an astronaut suit on an alien planet, and a homeless blonde woman on a city street corner begging for money. I actually might zoom all of these out one more time just to even get more of the surrounding elements. All right, so I zoomed out one more time on all of those, and here is the collection that I've got. I've got a woman on a beach, a homeless woman on a city 
sidewalk, a woman in a spaceship, a woman at a baseball park, a woman on the battlefield, a woman in a ball gown, and a woman in the forest. So I generated those seven images, and just for fun, if you remember this video, it kind of does this merge effect between images. If you want to know how I did that, I used Runway ML to do that. If you're in Runway and you come to your dashboard, you click on Generate Videos, they have this tool called Frame Interpolation. Click in there. I'll drag all seven of the images that I just created into here. You can see here's my images, and then I'm going to click on Advanced under Settings. I've got seven images here. I'll leave it at 10 second clip duration, but transition time, if I leave it at 100%, it's just going to continually transition the whole time. I want to bring it way down so that each image stays still on the screen for a second before transitioning. So if I put it at about 10% and clip duration of 10 seconds and generate that, we'll get a really cool video that transitions between each of the scenes. And here's what we got. So you can see now it's transitioning the woman in between every scene that she's in. Now, obviously the biggest problem with this method is that her face is always gonna be kind of in the same pose, but you can clearly tell that it's the same woman in every single image, but her face is not very dynamic yet. I can't really move it around. I'm sure there's people out there that are much more creative than me that will figure out how to actually pose the face a little bit better and still get the same character. I also imagine Midjourney is going to be adding something into the platform themselves pretty soon that will also solve this. Now, the last little trick that I want to show you is I want to show you how to get this infinite zoom video effect. You can actually do this fairly easily using just Midjourney and the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So I'll show you how I would do that now. So we need to start with a base image here. Me being me, let's start with a wolf in a snowy forest landscape. Aspect ratio 16.9. All right, so this is going to be our most zoomed in version of the image. I really like this bottom right one the most, so I'm going to go ahead and start with that one. So we'll upscale number four. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and zoom out 2X on this first version. So here's the four images I got. I'm gonna go ahead and upscale number four here. And what's really cool is we can now start using custom zooms to start to alter the image into something completely different. So let's go ahead and do custom zoom. I'm gonna make sure we leave the zoom at two, but now I can change it to a red, dusty alien planet with weird creatures. And here's what we got. You can see it's starting to transition into this new idea that I gave it. This one on the top left looks like it's getting pretty crazy. So I'm gonna upscale this number one, zoom out 2X on this. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna repeat this process for a few more iterations, and then we're gonna pull the these images into DaVinci Resolve and create that zoom. All right, so I went ahead and generated 10 different images. It ends on this image. You'll see in a minute all the transitions in between. Now, the next step is actually optional, but I highly recommend it to get the best results of your infinite zoom effect. The next thing I would recommend doing is upscaling all of your images so that they're much higher quality. I personally use a tool called Topaz AI. It's not a free tool, it is a premium tool, but if you do head over to Future Tools and you search for upscale, there are a handful of free upscalers that you can use. There's this one here, there's this one. The one that I tend to use is Topaz. The reason I like Topaz, I can literally take all of these 10 images that I created, drag and drop them into here, click on save 10 images, and it will just upscale them all in bulk. Okay, so now all of my images are upscaled to basically four times the original size. I can go ahead and close out of this tool here. And now I'm gonna jump into DaVinci Resolve. I'm gonna create a new timeline here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag and drop every single image that I created on onto my timeline. So I've got my first wolf image here and I'm just gonna drag them all on one at a time. All right, so I've got all 10 images on here. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna select all of my images and on my zoom up here, I'm gonna double the size. Also, each image right now stays on the screen for five seconds. I think that's a little bit too long. I'm gonna have each image stay for two seconds. So I'm gonna select all of my images again. I'm gonna go to change clip duration. And then I've got this little change clip duration box over here and I'm gonna set them all to two seconds. We'll change that. Now it's gonna change them all to two seconds. I need to close up my gaps here. Now I've got all of my images zooming out for two seconds. So now I'm just gonna keyframe each image. I'm gonna go to the very left of this first image, turn on my zoom keyframe here by clicking this little diamond in the top right, go to the end of this frame, click that same little diamond, but this time my zoom is gonna be at one. Now you can see it's starting to zoom out on that image. I'm gonna do the same thing for my next frame here. I'm gonna set it on the front line here, click this little diamond, go to the second line here, click the diamond up in the right to set a keyframe again, and then set the zoom to one. Now what I can do to speed up the process is I can click on this box, come up here, click copy, select all the rest of the boxes, right click in one of them, 
and then click paste attributes. And then if I click video attributes and just select everything, it will apply that same zoom effect to all of my images. And then here's our end result. If I just press play, you could watch and it will just continually zoom out on this image and pull in the next image. And it'll just keep on going and you'll see all of the various images that I created and that it you know, transforms between. I could go ahead and export this now and I've got this infinitely zooming out image. Now it's obviously not infinite. I use just 10 images here. I could probably do this all night and string along a hundred images and just make something that continually zooms out. But this is the one that I've got now where you can see it just zooms out, starts with a wolf, and then it starts to turn into this red alien planet. And then the next thing we know, there's an alien peeking into the screen. And the next thing we know, we realize all of this is just inside of a crystal ball. And then the next thing we know, we're back in a winter forest, kind of where we started with some weird, creepy silhouette thing. And then if you want it to infinitely zoom in, the simplest way to do that is to select all of these clips here, right click on one of them, create a new compound clip here, and now you've got this all as one clip. And then what I can do is come over to my right side here, click on speed change, and you can see the direction arrow. I can reverse the direction arrow. Now it starts all the way zoomed out, and it will continually zoom in on the image instead of continually zooming out. So that would be the easiest way to get the sort of reverse effect of what you were starting with. Now there are other ways to do this. You could do it in Adobe Premiere. Uh, there are other tools that might do this a little bit better, but this is the simplest and freest way that I know how to do it. There's a handful of really cool effects that you can get from the new Midjourney 5.2. I still find it interesting that they kind of downplayed this release. They didn't make this version six. This is just point two, but that feature has just opened up worlds of new creativity that people can create out of Midjourney journey now and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm having a blast playing with this zoom feature and I showed you three really, really cool ways that you can use it right now to make really interesting creative videos or get multiple characters in the same scene. And it's just mind blowing how quickly this stuff is advancing and some of the cool stuff that you're able to do now that you weren't able to do just weeks ago. I'm loving it. Hopefully these little mini tutorials helped you and you've got some new stuff that you can try in mid journey. As always, if you like this kind of stuff, check out futuretools.io. This is where I curate all the the coolest tools that I come across. I update the AI news page on a daily basis. And I've also got a free newsletter. You click right here on this join the free newsletter button. And every single Friday, I'll send you the TLDR of everything that happened in AI that I think you should know about, as well as just the five coolest tools that I came across. It'll give you the grand overview and keep you in the loop once a week. And you can get on it for free over at futuretools.io. And if you want more videos like this, you like keeping in the loop with the latest AI news, latest AI research, and cool tutorials on how to do really interesting effects and things like that using AI, make sure you like this video and subscribe to this channel. And I'll make sure more of this kind of stuff shows up in your YouTube feed. Thanks again for tuning in. I really enjoyed nerding out with you today. Hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>